Greetings everyone and welcome back. Today we are back in the workshop yet again. The truck needs some more work. It's time to change that oil. We're gonna get dirty in the shop and get that oil changed. All right, this is one of the easiest things and it's something that everyone should know how to do, especially if you want to start becoming more capable, more handy in your garage or workshop. This is routine maintenance. It has to be done. You cannot avoid it. Please don't push the limit on this. This is something that will protect your vehicle and keep it running and lasting quite a long time. It really doesn't take that long to do and it's a very simple process. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Back in the day, the rule of thumb was every 3,000 miles or three months, whichever comes first, you change that oil. I will always recommend that you follow the manufacturer's guidelines set for your vehicle, your make and model, whatever that case may be. Check your owner's manual because it's all in there. You're gonna need that anyway because if you've never done this before, you're gonna need to know a few things, all of which are in the owner's manual. You need to know how much oil goes into your vehicle. It varies. Some vehicles, four and a half quarts, some vehicles, six quarts, just depends on what you're driving. You're also gonna need to know what kind of oil, what weight, okay? Oils come in different weights. When you go to purchase your oil, you'll see 5W20, 5W30, 10W30, 10W40. All of the parts, materials, the oil, all of that stuff you can find at your local automotive store. A lot of times, first timers, they go into an automotive store and there's a whole wall of nothing but oil filters. You can do one of two things. You can go to the counter and ask them, uh, I need an oil filter for my car. You give them the year, the engine size, the model, the make, all that stuff. They'll be able to pull everything off the shelf for you. But other times there's a book over in that area and you can flip through, find your car, find the year. The book will tell you exactly which filter to get, pull it off the shelf, and you're good to go. You will need some general tools, maybe some wrenches or a small socket set, something like that. You're also gonna need a couple specialty tools. Most likely you're gonna need an oil filter wrench specific to your vehicle. Anymore, I order everything online. There's a couple of places out there that you can order all sorts of automotive parts from and they will ship directly to your house makes it real nice and easy and convenient. You never have to leave your home. Now this can be a dirty job. You're gonna need a couple other things as well. Um, you're gonna need something to protect your hands. I always recommend putting on some rubber gloves because you could get your hands very, very oily with that old used oil that's coming out of your vehicle that you're gonna drain out. Also, make sure you have some shop towels handy. This can get messy. I'm gonna try to walk you through how to prevent that from happening. The first few times you start doing it on your vehicle, you'll find your way around and it'll get a lot easier. You also need something to contain that used oil. Automotive parts stores will have a big plastic um, dish-like thing that will contain that, you can seal it. And then when you're done, you can take it to a recycling center. A lot of times service stations will allow you to dump your oil there. Just find one close to your home and make sure you recycle that. Don't be the guy that takes it to the backyard and then throws it over the fence. One of the other things you may need to do is get your car up off the ground slightly. So you will need to elevate the vehicle because you're gonna have to get under it to get to where the oil pan is to drain out that old used oil. Now, here's the thing. When you get under that vehicle and your significant other, he or she comes out and they see this, they're gonna be like this. Also be sure to stay tuned at the end of the video. I always like to throw a few tips to make this job even that much more easy. And while we're at it, don't forget to subscribe because I'm dropping all sorts of videos like this constantly. Please give me a thumbs up, it really helps the channel. Drop a comment below if you found this useful. I'd love to hear from everybody. But forget about all that stuff now, let's get to work. All right, you can see I got my truck in here now. Um, one of the things I like to do before I start the oil change is to go ahead and run the engine for just a couple of minutes. It kind of thins the oil and starts flushing it around and then it will, will drain out a little easier. Uh, I have my catch pan here, this really has got some mileage out of it, um, but you can see the design here. It will trap all that used oil. When you take the oil filter off, you can place that here and that will drain out. And then it has a spout, so when you take it to like your recycle center or you can put it back into um, a jug or some sort of uh, container and then take it over to your recycle center. Now I need to get under the vehicle, 
pull that drain plug, get all that used oil out. A couple of the things I like to point out here is that this is where you return the oil. You take this cap off and you put fresh oil down here, but you can see right on the cap, it tells you what kind of oil goes in this particular engine, SAE 5W20. I'm gonna go ahead and just twist, and the cap comes off. I'm gonna set that off to the side. Now, I never thought filming underneath the vehicle would be as challenging as this, but under my truck, you're looking for a drain plug, and there it is right there. We're going to remove that drain plug right here, and all the oil is gonna go out and dump into my container. All right, now, there's no way I can easily get this filmed. So I just set the camera up. We'll see how it turns out. I think I got this. You can see it's starting to leak out now, or not leak the drain. And there we go. What I do is try to hold it there until I know it's loose and then pull it up. And there goes your oil. Okay, so we've let the oil all drain out now. Now we gotta get that oil filter off. And that's actually in a, in a different location. It's more towards the front of the engine. You wanna make sure that you put your drain plug back in the oil pan. Make sure that goes back in there and seals it up because when you move your container, that, that uh, your oil pan may still drip a little bit. You don't want that getting all over the floor. So go ahead and put that drain plug back in. Also, when you put that drain plug back in, make sure it's good and snug, maybe a little bit more than snug. You don't want to over tighten it and risk stripping the threads. You just want to snug it up really good so you don't have any leaks. Personally, I don't torque it to a certain specification. I just tighten it down really good. Just be sure not to over tighten. Oil filters are threaded on usually. A lot of times they're not in a friendly place. You may not be able to easily get to it. Just depends on your vehicle. But in this case, it's gonna be right up in the front. Just gonna to have to reach up, unscrew it from the engine. Now keep in mind, there is probably some oil still in that filter. So when you remove that, there's gonna be some more that drains out. So make sure you move your container underneath where you're working. Let's get under the vehicle. All right, I'm gonna to try to hold the camera where you can see. But this right here is the oil filter. Looks like a big canister that is screwed into the side of the engine. This is where you're gonna need that specialty wrench to loosen this and then it can be removed by hand. All right, here is the new oil filter. Let's talk a little bit about oil filter wrenches. This is the canister that gets screwed into the side of your engine and you need a specialty wrench to remove this or at least loosen it and then you can remove it by hand. Some of them will look like this. Basically, it will sit on the back or seat itself on the back of the oil filter. And you'll be able to turn it. This obviously is too big. It's an old one from another vehicle. Or you can find some that are a little more universal. Okay, something that looks like this. This does, it goes around it. When you start to loosen it, you can see that those teeth will bite down and then you'll be able to loosen the oil filter. So I'm gonna use this and get that old oil filter off. So what you basically do is put a, a ratchet or wrench on the end of it. Get it to bite down and then turn. Might need to work around some other. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and remove this oil filter. I can do it by hand now. Hopefully catch anything that may fall. And just keep unscrewing it till it separates from the engine. I try to then hold it upright 
and get it down to my container and pour it out. All right, now that you got the old oil filter off, you wanna take like a shop rag or something and go in there and wipe all that old oil. Get rid of all that old oil, wipe it down real good. And then you wanna prep your new oil filter. You can see on an oil filter, it's got this rubber ring that goes all around. It makes a real nice tight seal. In order to prep your oil filter properly, what you wanna do is open up one of your quarts of oils and go ahead and dip your finger inside there and rub oil all along this seal. So just like this, coat your finger, take your oil filter and just rub it around that seal. And that way when you put this back on your engine, it will seal up nice and tight. I say all this because it's really difficult to get the camera down as I put this back on. My hands gotta go way up there and get this uh, spun on in place and sealed. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so tip on putting those oil filters on. You want to spin them on snug and then quarter turn, maybe a half turn, just hand tight. Don't put the wrench back on and really tighten that down. It's not necessary, doesn't need it. Just hand tight, another quarter turn, you're good to go. At this point, your vehicle should be empty of oil, have the drain plug back in, and the new filter put in place. Now let's talk a little bit about oil. Two very popular kinds of oil, conventional and synthetic. They do have blends that are available if you wanna go that route. Choice is up to you. Uh, personally, I go full synthetic. According to my owner's manual, this takes 7.7 .7 quarts of oil. Yeah, let me go try to get my measuring cups out of the kitchen and figure that out. It's not gonna happen. So each one of these is a quart, but they do have some measurement guides on the side that you can see here. And I'm going to drop seven and a half quarts. Then I'm gonna pull out the oil stick and uh, see where I'm at and then top it off as needed. So now I'm gonna get the funnel and go ahead and pour the oil in the engine. All right, you can see I have my funnel in place. I'm gonna go ahead and pour. I'll spare you the time of doing this seven and a half times. So I got seven and a half quarts in my engine. Now what you need to do is go ahead and start your engine up. What you wanna have happen is get that oil pumping through the engine, have it uh, circulate through, soak into the oil filter, and go ahead and let it run for just a couple of minutes. Afterwards, shut it down, and then check the dipstick so you know exactly how much oil is in your engine and if you are in the safe zone. I'll show you how to do that. Let me just go ahead and run this for a little bit. All right, so I got the engine running now. The other thing I wanna do is just kind of peek underneath the vehicle and go ahead and check for any kind of leaks. You would wanna address those leaks now before you start driving out on the road. Maybe a little hard to see behind this, but there's a yellow ring. That is your engine oil dipstick, and you wanna go ahead and pull that out and check it to see where your oil level is. Go ahead and pull this out. You can see at the end of the dipstick, there are two indicators. What you want to see is the oil level in between those two marks. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off. Wipe it clean, put it back inside the engine, and pull it back out. Not sure if you can see it but it's actually a little low, so I need to add a little bit more oil to get it up into the safe zone. I'll go ahead and take care of that. Okay, after you top off your engine, oil's in the safe zone, you are good to go. If you are just learning about cars and wanna start working on them, I definitely would suggest starting off with an oil change. It's the routine maintenance that has to be done. With your old oil, make sure you take it to a recycle center and get rid of it properly. Now let's get to the tips. I have a couple of tips just to help you out here making this process just a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and get started. Tip number one. 
Tip number one is just about keeping things clean. Invest in what I like to call dry sweep. This is just floor absorbent. It's basically some almost like kitty litter, right? If you have a spill, drop it right on that spill. It will absorb all that oil up. And all you do uh, after it's done absorbing it is just sweep it up and throw it in the trash. Sometimes things happen. You're working, you knock something over and it's just a big spill. You want something like this to take care of that. Don't try to like mop it up with rags or stuff like that because these will not dry out. All of this, all of that oil will absorb in this. You'll feel a lot better about cleaning up that kind of mess. Trust me. All right, moving on to tip number two. Tip number two to make things a lot easier, invest in a pair of drive up ramps. These are made out of plastic. Notice I can pick them up, throw them around, um, but they're very strong, hold the weight of your vehicle. What this is gonna do, you drive your vehicle up onto the ramp. It will get, the, it will get your vehicle up in the air a little bit so you can easily get underneath it, work on it, service it, change that oil, makes things a lot easier. And it, to me, it's a lot safer than putting a jack under your car, jacking it up, trying to get a jack stand underneath it and securing your vehicle. It's tilted. You never know what kind of balance it's gonna be. This will take care of that, make it a lot easier for you to work on your vehicle. I didn't really need it with the truck because the truck sits high, but any of my other cars, I definitely use these drive up ramps. Moving on, and our last and final tip is tip number three. I don't care how you do three. It could be three, 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 three. Tip number three probably should have been tip number two because I'm going to encourage you to get two funnels. When you go and start getting your materials, get two funnels. One is going to be for the clean oil, the other is going to be for the dirty, nasty oil. If you use the same funnel, you get a funnel that's got the dirty and filthy oil and you're basically letting some of that back right into your engine. Get two funnels, keep them separated, wrap them up in a towel. The clean one obviously will stay a lot nicer. And so why do I say you have a funnel for the dirty oil? Because if you have that container, what you can do is save the oil bottles that you just emptied into your engine, put the dirty funnel there and pour that dirty oil back into those containers. And then you can easily take them to the recycle center and dispose of that oil properly. Two funnels, but it's tip number three. Sorry. That's it. We've taken care of an oil change. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I know you can do this. This is not hard. Take a chance. If you're interested in working on cars, give it a go. Service your own vehicle. Um, it's actually very rewarding. Definitely a confidence booster and it can save you a lot of money. Again, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I'm the Capable Gentleman, always showing you ways to go from dirty to dapper. And I'm always going to encourage you to never stop learning, whether it be learning about cars, learning about anything else, never stop learning. Until next time, be kind, everyone. See you next week.